Hello there, in this video we're going to show how you can run as a system. And why would you want to run a system? Well, uh, because of Intune, for example, run a system. And sometimes you maybe package something, it works perfect under your local admin account, but when you push it through Intune, it fails. So let me show what I mean with Intune, for example. If I take one of my packages here and click on it, and then go Properties, you know, when you create the package, you have the option here to install behavior. You can install a system or user. User, it will install with the permission as the logged in users. If they're not local admin, uh, anything on the program files or that require more permission will fail. So system always have a lot of permission. So that's why it can be good to not have to upload your Win32 app to Intune to test. You can test already on your local machine and system. So here I have a task manager open. You see I'm logged in as GBN, but a lot of tasks are running as system. So how can we test to run a system? I'm going to use a um, virtual system to uh, demonstrate this. And at the end of this video, be sure to not miss that. We're going to do a little hacker thing. We're going to use this to run a system to do something pretty cool. So stay to the end. OK, but for now, we want to run a system. So I have this uh, virtual machine and I'm actually logged in as a normal user right now. And in order to run a system, you must be an admin. So I just wanted to show this have uh, this goes to the end of the video. So this is a user, not an admin user, a Zoom started. Uh, this user also have Outlook started. It have a web page, this web page running. So let's say this user doesn't log out. This is the sales user. It just uh, locked his session. And now I'm going to log in with um, admin user. OK, so now we are in with an admin user and we want to run a system. So if I would run anything now, I would run that with my own credentials. So I start a CMD. I will start it as admin. But if I here now type, who am I? Who am I? You see I'm Azure AD. Oh, here pops up uh, Teams. And I'm John Burns, my user. So I'm not system. So how can I be system then? Well, we're going to use a, a Win internal tool called PSXEC. It's actually a tool used to execute the um, uh, uh, execute files on remote devices, but it can be used to run a system on a local device. So we can just do download PS tools, and I might have done that already on this uh, uh, device. So here we have PS tools, this internals. So here we have PS tools, it's done by Mark uh, Rusinovich, it's bought by Microsoft. So we can download the whole PS tool suite. We will just need one file. I'm going to take two files, but we actually just need one. So it's fairly small, four megabyte. So if we open here, I'm just going to extract this one. Uh, extract all. I could have been using 7-zip, uh, this machine have, but I used the Windows built in. So here it's open up in my down download. I just want PSXX and PSXX64. So I'm going to copy these two. And I'm going to put them somewhere on my system. I'll go see. Let's call it, uh, it doesn't matter where you have them, as long as you know the path. I call it PS Tools. And I'm going to paste these two uh, files in here. So these are the ones we need to elevate to uh, system. Uh, this one is 32-bit, works good on 64-bit, and this one is 64-bit. I'm going to use the 64-bit one, so I actually just needed one. So I go back here, and you see it's important it started as administrator. If I didn't start the CMD as administrator, it won't work. So I'll go back to the root, and then I called it PS Tools, right? So if I do a dir here, I have my PSXEC. And here comes, let's... Um, here comes the command. I'll run the 64-bit boat works. So I'm going to do a dash help just to show which two switches we need to be system. So if I scroll up here, we need first, we need I. It's to run the program so it interacts with the desktop. Because by default, 
a system run as uh, non-interactive. And I'll show that uh, in the task manager. So if we open task manager, and then we show all, thi all things here, it's a field who's not visible by default, so I will have to right click. If I select columns, there's a column called session ID. So if I click on session ID, and then sort, let's sort all on system. So here you see system session ID zero. What does that mean? Well, that means it's not interactive. If this one runs something, it can't be shown as a window. But this one, CRSS, run in session one. That means it's run as interactive. So most system run hidden. And that's why we're going to use this dash i so we can interact with it. Going to put it in session one. So if we run psxec and just dash i, it's not going to make our system. We need one more. We need dash s. So here it says run the remote process in the system account. We're going to run locally. So hopefully that explains the da dashes. So now if we run psxec 64, we do dash i y for interactive because we want it in uh, session id 1. We do dash s y because we want to be system. What do we want to run? Well, let's re start another CMD. First time you run, you usually have to accept um, agreement. I probably already done that on this system. So now we got another CMD. Why did we do that? Well, you remember when I typed who am I, it showed my Azure AD backslash John Burns. Well, now I'm empty authority system. So now I have a lot more permission. Well, still admin, but there is no uh, this bypass group policy and a lot. And again, disclaimer, be careful when you're in this mode. So let's see, what can we do here? Uh, and what, so if I run my uh, package that I wanted to test in Intune, I can run it from here within this uh, CMD, go to my package and run it. Then it will run a system. There are some uh, limitations with the um, system. If you have seen my latest uh, Winget videos, you see that because, for example, winget.exe, if I type that here as system, it says it doesn't recognize it. But let me start another CMD. And this time I run as administrator and I'm going to do who am I again. So if I do who am I, I should be the Azure AD account. Who am I? Yep. If I now type winget.exe, it actually finds it. So why didn't it find it in the um, in, uh, system account? Well, it has to do with the path. Because if I, um, let's, uh, if I type set here, now I'm in the Azure AD account. You see, I have a path here. So if we look more at that path, I can do an echo percent uh, path. Then we see what that variable path have. That path have one value. Let's see where it is. Yep. The, the last one here, C user John Brint's Updata apps. And if we go here, let's see if I can copy that one. Do control C. So if we do CD, change directory. And look, what do we have here? Dear, we actually have a winget here. So that means wherever, it doesn't matter where I stand here in the directory, Due to my path, I'll pass, uh, show that one again. Due to my path, it will always look for winget in this path. So first it will look where I stand. If it doesn't find it, it will go to Windows System 32. It won't find it there either. Then it will go in Windows, blah, 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 all the way to the end. And here it will actually find winget. If we switch back to our... Um, uh, if we switch back to our friend who is uh, system. So if I now look from system, if I put who am I, hope you can follow me here. This one, if I check the path, I do, it also had the variable for path. It actually also have Windows app here, but if we try to go here, it will fail. So let me copy this one and do CD. So this one will fail. That's why winget, it can't find winget because winget is definitely not under system 32 and it's going to go through all the stuff it has in the path and say, hey, I can't find it. 
But if we go back to our other, I put who am I again, uh, as your AD, we have the path. You see here that Winget is zero kilobyte. It's actually not the real Winget. This is um, a file, a special file who points to the real one. And we can find that out. I'm going to clear the screen now because it's a bit messy with CLS. We can find out where this file points to if we use a, a tool called fsutil. So I'll hit that one just to see what the next command is. fsutil. Then it's called reparse point. Reparse point. And we hit enter again. And here you can either delete, delete the reparse point or query. We want to query. And what do we want to query? Well, winget.exe. This will not be in the format so easy to read, but I think it makes the point. So here, I'll have to scroll up a bit, uh, high resolution. So here we ran and it find, and it's pointing actually to the real file. So it's go to C program files, Windows app, Microsoft desktop install, the version number to winget. So what this, I'll show this file again dear here, this winget here is zero kilobyte, but it's just a pointer to the real one. So that's why system can't use uh, winget natively, but if you have seen my videos, we have a way around that. We actually give the full path to winget by a script. Uh, so, so when we are NT30 system, go to your uh, folder, you can even start PowerShell. You can even type isc and start, and everything that you start from this command prompt run as system. So here was uh, something it recovered. So this one installed uh, putty, I think. Yeah, so we could run this one, and it's going to find winget because we add, and it want to exit. So it already have the latest, but that's not what I wanted to show. Just to show that. Uh, um, when you are a system, you can test your script, you can test your installation. If they work as system, then you are ready to upload to Intune. So that's a bit about system. Uh, now we come to the end part that I wanted to show. You remember when I was logged in as um, this uh, sales user who had a lot of dollar sign on the wallpaper. Let's say we want to go in as that user, but we don't know that user's password. And again, this is hacker. I don't recommend you ever do this. It's just good to know how powerful the system account is. So the user is logged on, but disconnected, but I don't know that user's password. So if I try to log in as this user, well, I need to know the pin or the password, let's say the password. I don't know this user's password, but I, I really would like to go in as this user. I know my password and I'm local admin. So the, I know the user is there. What I can do is from a command line where I am started as a user, uh, system, sorry, I can do taskmgear.exe. That's going to start a task manager. Actually, I want to close this one because I started this one as a normal user. So be sure you don't have any task manager. If I start task manager as system, here I got it. Then here you have uh, different users. You see you have the sales users here and I have started this task manager again as system. If I right click here, I don't have to use to know the user's uh, uh, password. If I just say connect, I'm going to get into that user session. And that's the cool thing I told in the beginning of the video. So you click connect. I don't know the user's password. We are in here. I don't know if you remember that he was looking at this web page. If we look at the wallpaper, I'm logged in now as without not knowing his password, the sales user, just because I was logged in as a system. And just to prove that this user can't do the same back because uh, this user is not local admin. Well, first, if I run as admin, it's going to ask, say, hey, you're not uh, admin and he don't know. If I just start CMD normal and then go to our PS tools and try to run uh, PSXEC and I want to run as interactive 
system, what we did last time, it's not going to work. Oh, this one have to agree. Access denied. You have to be local admin and you easily see that by saying administrator up here. So as an administrator, I could do this trick, but not as a normal user. I think that's super cool. I hope you think that as well. Thank you very much for watching this video. See you in another one. Have a good day.